Hey guys, what's up? Spectre here, and 2024 is set to be huge for games, but there's a somewhat lesser known title that I wanted to shed some light on and tell you why it should be on your radar, and that's Pacific Drive. This first person driving survival game will pit you against supernatural creatures in the Pacific Northwest. Let's jump in. Pacific Drive drops you into a surreal Pacific Northwest, cordoned off as the Olympic Exclusion Zone. This lonely expanse, choked by dynamic weather and strange phenomena, turns your station wagon into your lifeline. You chart your own course through procedurally generated forests, one biome among many, starting from gas station nodes scattered across the post-apocalyptic landscape. But this isn't just a scenic drive. Unsettling sci-fi forces lurk in the woods, making the seemingly ordinary feel alive with dread. Inspiration for these elements comes from Twin Peaks, The X-Files, and The Stalker games, all borrowing from their unsettling atmosphere. The key to this creepiness, according to the devs, is what you can't see. Limited visibility, fog, and restricted sight lines from within your car's cocoon crank up the tension, making you acutely aware of the unknown just beyond the windshield. And the knowledge that something truly unsettling actually lurks out there adds to the overall tension of the game. This first-person survival game blends resource management, exploration, and time trial racing into a unique experience. Your primary focus is maintaining your trusty vehicle, You'll have to scavenge resources, craft and repair and upgrade your car to navigate the treacherous environment. The further you venture, the more advanced your upgrades will have to be to withstand the challenges ahead. And the world itself is a hostile wilderness. You'll have to dodge magnetic anomalies that pull your car, electric fences that drain batteries, falling trees and erupting rock formations. Each encounter can damage your vehicle, requiring skillful repairs and a variety of tools. Time pressures will add tension to your exploration. Each drive is essentially a time trial against an encroaching storm. Similar to the storms you've seen in your favorite Battle Royale games, you won't last long if you get caught in it. Locate escape portals scattered throughout the environment to return to safety before the storm can consume you. Failure comes at a cost, as you'll lose resources and progress. Pacific Drive emphasizes exploration and discovery. Procedurally generated forests create a unique landscape with each playthrough. Craft items on the go, or utilize your garage's crafting stations for more complex projects. The game isn't always just about survival either, it's about building a bond with your vehicle that facilitates that survival. Your car develops quirks over time, like headlights that sync with the radio or a horn that honks when you shift gears. These quirks add personality and can be diagnosed or even embraced as part of your unique automotive companion. So they won't always be debuffs or a challenge thrown your way, some of these quirks are genuinely just funny and you might want to keep them around. Pacific Drive offers a challenging and rewarding experience for players who enjoy resource management, exploration, and a touch of the unconventional. And as for the story, well, that's shrouded in a bit of mystery as well. From what I can gather from the trailers, the players refer to as a breacher. This makes me wonder if we're breaching different zones within the exclusion zone itself, or if we've breached the wall to get into the exclusion zone, making us an outsider to the area. The government has evacuated everyone from the Olympic Peninsula, and an entity known as Arda also seems to have built the walls that surround the exclusion zone, possibly in an attempt to contain the anomalies. In the trailer, they also reference some sort of groundbreaking technology that seems to have gone awry. Personally, I'm super excited for Pacific Drive because the world just seems so engrossing. The Pacific Northwest isn't an area that we get to see very often in games, and I just love how foreboding but also inviting the world looks. I'm genuinely just curious about what's out there, even though there seems to be some cryptid-like enemies roaming around. The analog horror vibes of the PSAs we see in the trailer also add to the overall vibe of the game in a really cool way. The enemy variety is also something I'm looking forward to seeing, as the range and even size of them seems to vary wildly, from little magnetic anomalies that stick to you, to mannequin-like enemy groups that may or may not move whenever you turn around, to those cryptid-like beasts who call the forest their home. I also love how much care they've put into the actual car itself, since we'll be spending so much time in it. And I hope there's some customization that we can do to the garage, maybe bringing back trinkets that we find, little odds and ends that we can leave around the space. I also love that the studio has left a lot up to players to discover, They've kept a ton of secrets under wraps and haven't given away too much with their trailers and even in their press coverage. I appreciate the approach that they've taken to make sure that players understand the gameplay loop, but aren't giving away everything about the world itself. I also really hope that they add in some drop-in, drop-out co-op that maybe plays according to the host's progress, allowing you to jump into their world and help them out and let you drop out whenever. 
it might be cool to have someone in the passenger seat. Between my last video and this one, which if you haven't checked out my last video, I would super appreciate it if you gave it a click. I put a lot of effort into it and it just meant a lot to me. Game Informer came out with a new video showing off some new gameplay of Pacific Drive, and it really highlighted a few reasons why I'm so excited for this game, and I think these things will excite you too, so I just wanted to dive into some of those little tidbits. First of all, something I noticed in the UI is that you can always see the distance between you and your car. And I don't know, I just really like that because it just sort of reinforces how important the car is and how it's your sort of safe bubble. I felt this way in No Man's Sky where I would constantly orient myself on a new planet based on where my ship was because, well, that was like safe. And it just reinforces the idea that your car is your lifeline in a really physical and direct way that affects gameplay. Another thing that you can see from their gameplay, which you can check that out, I left a link in the description, is that there's a lot of resource gathering and crafting involved in the core gameplay loop. I also really like that cosmetics appear to present themselves early on in the game as they said that they were in the first mission. I'm happy that cosmetics aren't sort of a late stage game that you unlock over time. I like the idea that like your relationship with your car and its appearance will morph from the beginning of the game all the way through to the end. Something that I just really love, and I think this is my favorite thing so far about Pacific Drive, although there are a lot of things, uh, just the minutia of the menu, the switches, the dials, the, everything about the car, it just makes you feel like you're playing more of an immersive sim. You have to put your station wagon in park or it will roll away. You have to fill up the gas tank. You have to just do these little things that aren't, you know, press X to get out of a car. Press X to get into the car. You know, it's just making you really live in this world and learn about how objects in that world work. And I really, really appreciate that, even in games like Elite Dangerous. Like, no, don't give me a button to land the aircraft. Teach me how to put out the landing gear. You know, teach me to request, you know, access to a, a landing pad before I land. You know, things like that just really ground you in the world. And I really appreciate that attention to detail. And just another thing that I noticed throughout the gameplay is that the art style is gorgeous. It reminds me of like Life is Strange, but even more moody. And I can tell that this is just going to be one of those games where I'm just like walking around the world and I just slow down and do that sort of game demo, like just slow pan across the landscape. I just know I'm going to I hope there's a photo mode when this game ships or it, that it comes shortly after. The more that I've seen of this game, I really, really like their decision to stay in first person and not even really give you a third person perspective when you're driving because it turns your eyes into a resource. Where are you going to look? Are you going to look to your right at the map or are you going to look at the road? Or are you going to look at the weird anomaly in the distance? You have to decide what do I have time to focus on and which one of those things will keep me alive? And I really, really like that choice. And I think that that's just sort of emblematic of this game as a whole. I think that devs have really found great ways to integrate gameplay with the story and the world and make those things really mesh in a way that I think spells success for this game, and it's why I'm so excited for it. Just when and where can you get your hands on Pacific Drive? Well, it hits PlayStation 5 and PC on February 22nd, 2024. It'll be available on both Steam and the Epic Store on PC. And that's it. Everything you need to know about Pacific Drive. Are you looking forward to it? Are there any specific features you'd like to see from it? And if you've enjoyed this video, I suggest checking out some of my others. It honestly helps the channel out so much, and I would really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.